We're going to do it. We're going to crash right in here. I also need to grab that, uh, the Gachapon machine before I go, and whatever Korok seat is uh, un or likely in... Oh, I'm not sure if this is a good enough descent. I'm not sure how the game handles this. Undoubtedly, they thought of a way, but when I skip the cutscene, where is... Oh, uh oh, am I going to get hit by my own plane? I'm going to preemptively backflip. Okay, it was fine. It's it's okay. Can I? Real quick. Hold on. Okay, yeah, of course. I can't do that. I don't know why I had that in my head, that that was something that I could possibly do. And we have yet another blessing. Uh, you know, I think I did do this in the failed recording session, but thankfully, my anger last night at having lost the recording uh, made me forget a little bit. It might also be some of the, the alcohol entering my bloodstream, because I thought of the best way for me to salvage this... this... <laughs> fiasco of losing a recording. It's just to pour myself a white Russian and, you know, drink it all away. <laughs> As I said, it's my my ex's birthday. What else am I going to do? <laughs> it looks like a hydrant, a Zonai device that gushes water when struck. According to legend, Sky Island saw water shortages long ago, but became lush and fertile thanks to this technology. That's an odd little bit of lore just to throw in an item description. A construct head. A Zonai device that always faces whatever it deems an enemy. Attach a combat Zonai device to the head for ho uh, homing. I, I want to say homecoming attacks. It's like just recently I... <laughs> when I went downstairs between recording sessions, I was telling my roommate about this uh, one of my birthday gifts, which was a like two-sided DM screen for me to... Uh, for me to put information in for the players and then also for me to um, have information behind the screen and I was really I re was really psyched about it I, but what I said was I was what did I say I think I said I was psyched I was or piked I think it was like piked because I was I was pumped and psyched or something like that and I, it's weird when the human the, the brain tries to come up with two different words that really mean the same thing and it just can't decide between them, and so it short circuits and just uses the same word. Or, well, combines the two into the same word. Oh, I hope I can make it. It's gonna be so close. I have Tulin's buff. I have a bunch of stamina, but I d do I have the height? Oh, and there's gonna be lightning, too. That'll be cool. An aerial lightning storm. Come on, Tulin. Let's go. Hold forward and unequip all my stuff. Strip down, Link. Take off all your clothes, please. Oh, it's sunny again. <laughs> that was the shortest thunderstorm ever. It's probably because I was close to that. Hmm. So, there's a thought there. I wonder, uh... I wonder if I can just skip the story beats and just go in. Ah, uh, we'll, we'll save that for later. Is there... There's probably a, a boss up there I should probably grab before I go. Maybe I grab it before I... You know what? I'm gonna grab it before I complete this quest. Because we're right here. We can just go immediately back. And if it's a dragon, I think that would be cool to fight it. I, I don't know. And it would be throw a little bit of mystique. Intrigue. Mystique! To combine words together that mean the same thing. Okay, let's make... Let's make that. And fly up. Look at that sunset. Ooh. <laughs> let's not let's not die in the sunset. It's a far cry from Breath of the Wild's urine steam. I know I've said that a lot, but we're in Nakluda and it's it is worth repeating. This game really is so much prettier in Breath of, than Breath of the Wild. And it makes me hopeful for the next Zelda game. Is that a dragon? It is a construct, which is sig significantly lamer now that we know how to just kill them and kind of not cheese the fight, but uh, get the fight over and done with real much quicker than I think it's uh, the threat level would suggest. I should probably get a little bit more height before I jump. Take a drink of my white Russian. Do you know... Why, when you see a V of geese, one line is always longer than the other? Not in this case, but you know why? Some of you have correctly guessed. 
It is because, scientifically, if we look at this analytically, with all the best bird experts weighing in on the subject, it is because there are more birds in one line. And that is that. Okay, we have a we have a dude. We have a dude, and then we can fly back down there. We have a I, I don't even know if I can call this a boss fight. This really just feels like I'm mining. It doesn't feel like there's any any threat at all. In fact, how many times have I just killed one of these guys? before it could even attack me. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. That's fine, that's all I need for you. A one-y. A two-y. A you-know-what. And one more. To Dewey. All right, break apart. Where is his health bar? How much health do you have? Goodbye. Are we still alive? Look at that! How much longer, though? That's it. His health bar never even showed up. Is that just crazy? I think that's crazy. Sage's will from that. We got a Sage's will from an enemy whose health bar didn't even bother showing up because he was that weak. Wow. What an absolute jabroni. Now, uh, now that we're done with whatever that was, let's just move on. Uh, we need to just go this way. And I'm pretty sure I can make that with, uh, with my stamina and height. Man, what a, what a view that is. What a view that is. That's... This is a cool quest. At first, you think it's really simple, going down the whirlpool and finding a shrine. Or not knowing what you, you know, you're coming up, you're up against, and then finding a shrine. But then you learn that you have to go up into the sky in order to get, unlock the shrine. We have to drop a crystal from the sky into the lake. And that's sweet. That's awesome. It's unique. I mean, yeah, we've we've had a couple of quests where we have to get crystals in the sky and then bring them down, but this is different. It's it just adds its own little spice. It's like it's handcrafted. And that's cool. And man, it's it just sweet. It's just sweet to go dive into the water like this. Experience things that you'd never experience in life. It's not just you're wandering around the wilderness finding random garbage. You are finding fantastic things. Although, to be fair, I guess water itself is kind of a fantastic thing, if you're me. Growing up, I never really had, um... I, I had access to a pool, but I was homeschooled. I don't know... I've, I've probably said this. I was homeschooled uh, up until college, actually. And because of that, uh, certain experiences... I wouldn't say socialization, because I kind of grew up in the city. Uh, certain experiences were things that were kind of gated off to me, or were a, um, a rarity, let's just say. And one of those was swimming. I just never really swam growing up. And that's kind of been my life in general. Uh, the certain experiences I just feel a little bit blind to. So like, here's a, a weird example. Um, Splatoon is just about to happen. There is a a grand, or <laughs> Splatoon is just about to happen. The final Splatfest of Splatoon is about to happen, the grand festival. And uh, I'm really excited for it, not just because it's a spectacle and it determines the events of the next game, but because it's something I never got to experience. I first got into Splatoon very, very late into its life. Like, 20... I want to say 2015, 2016, and all the Splatfest had, had ended, and so I always viewed them with this, like... <sighs> this mythical status. Because they're something I never got to experience, and it was hard for me to imagine a game where, like, the overworld would change, and the maps would change, and they would have unique music, and there would be these unique experiences of the community uh, celebrating itself while competing against itself, and it was always just so uh, alien to me. And Splatoon 2, I just through circumstances of the games that were coming out, and as well as me Let's Playing, I skipped it. And part of it was some serious... Oh boy! I did not see this in the last recording session. The failed one. 
This is new! Yes, I do! You're lying to me, game! Get up! <laughs> I love that this continues to be my strategy over and over again. Okay. We're falcon bowing this. Falcon bow is going to be known as the slayer of Ganon. That's one. That's two. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. So it is. I should probably equip a shield, huh? Whoa, that's a new weapon. Uh-oh. Whoa! That's new! That's a new weapon! Die! Quickly as... As quickly as humanly possible, please, sir. I do not want to see how much damage that does to my body. Please get poked. Oh! Okay, he's dead. Whew! All right. He left his turds behind. <laughs> ah, the Ganonberries. <laughs> the Gloom Club, a metal stick filled with madness and symbolic of doom. Its forceful strike can smash an object to pieces. Wait, I missed. I actually pressed the button. Its smashful strike can what? Oh, its gloom will gradually wear down the body of the wielder. That's a powerful weapon. And it's honestly kind of sick looking. Is that not really cool? That's sweet. Also, yet again, I'm going to drop my Demon King bow for this one. <laughs> because why not? Whew. All right. All right. That makes sense. He kind of hangs out in swamps. He's like Shrek. If Shrek were red, first and foremost, that's, let's get the most... The low-hanging fruit out of the out of the way. If if Shrek was red, if instead of earwax and sludge he left his poop behind, uh, and he you know crapped himself whenever he died, which I guess we all do. I shouldn't necessarily judge Ganon. Uh, we all do it when we die. That's just how it is. So you know what, Ganon? I'm not going to. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna crap shame you. I'm not gonna poop shame you. You poop just like. We all poop when we die. So back to Splatoon. Where on earth is it, Scorxy? So back to Splatoon. Uh, and so when Splatoon 3 came around, <laughs> I was like, man, this is this is crazy. This is crazy. There are Splatfests. It's, it's wild. And so I got to participate in for the first time. And so I took them incredibly seriously uh, to the point where I would practice like two weeks before they would start. And I would I would do the, the Splatfest. And I've won more than I lost, which is kind of neat. It's it's cool that I had that that luck uh, starting out my first Splatfest. But I, I've often missed out on things and wished that I could experience them again. Minecraft is another such thing where uh, I feel like 99% of my knowledge from Minecraft is from Steven Plays Minecraft, uh, which was one of the first Let's Plays I ever watched, and honestly, the one that got me into Let's Playing. Uh, it was... Steven plays Minecraft and Chugga Conroy's Let's Play of Super Luigi, not Mario, Luigi Galaxy. And those, those were my first LPs. And it's what made me love talking about them. I had a stutter growing up and, and talking uh, about, A, talking to people about my the games I love um, got me to stop rambling in real life about the stuff I love to people who wanted to hear me stop talking at any given moment. Uh, but also, it was it was cool because I got to practice talking. That's why I enjoy it so much. There's my shrine. There's some keys over there. Uh, but Minecraft, uh, so all my knowledge comes from that first LP, and I I <laughs> frequently get caught off guard when people talk about oh you know I I got I uh, I'm just to the point where I got horses, and I'm like wait hold on back up. There are horses. And then they're like, yeah, bro, there have been horses for like 20 years. And I, I didn't know. I didn't know. It's not something that was ever on my, I was ever able to experience with friends that much. And by the time I did, I don't like being this close to you. Let's go ahead and equip this to improve my reaction time. Please throw your thing. Throw it. Ow. Okay. Knock you down and then we can kill you. 
by the time I experienced it in college with uh, a group of friends, which is awesome. I loved college. Uh, it was modded, and that was it had like an al uh, a different alchemy system. It had entirely different stuff where I the learning curve was massive, and they had known all these things. That's another problem: is the learning curve is huge. But I'm at the beginning of it, and anyone I would play with is probably at the end of it. And I don't know where, like, I, I can't start. So, which is one of the reasons why I'm kind of excited to stream. Do I put the... <sighs> I don't want to put... But maybe I have to. You know, I can always, I can always melt it later. Where the power, what does the power go? I, I was like, what the power go to? These kind of contrast each, each other. Like, one of them is a gloom club of death, and the other one is like, hey, I love you. <laughs> They're kind of different things, although one of them is, hey, you ripped my heart out of my chest. I'm like, yeah, I did that because love hurts, and I love you. I, wanna, I want to look in the stone Talus' eyes. They don't have eyes. I want to look in their eyes and tell them, you know what? I cared enough to take time out of my day to destroy you, which shows that I care. It shows that I love you. It shows that you are the universe, and the universe was love. Okay, let's get this. Let's get this. The Subub Shrine. I didn't notice that funny name. The Subub Shrine, or sorry, Susub. That's probably why. That's probably why I didn't notice it in the original recording session because. <laughs> That's not its name. <laughs> the Subub Shrine. And it is yet another blessing. Is this the only thing we've done this video is blessing shrines? I think it might actually be. I'm trying to... Might... Yeah, no, it is. Because the other ones were... The other ones involved crystals. Ah, oh, man. I have a magic staff. It has a sapphire in it. It's seen better days. I'm dropping it. I'm dropping it. I need to use staves more. They're they're really cool. I like the idea of being a magic user, although I feel like the, the idea of being a magic user kind of goes out the window when there is no magic bar. At that point, it's just like, I don't know. It, it, it just cheapens it. I like the idea of having resources. Resources are, resources are fun. It's cool to manage them. <laughs> 